Hey everybody, it's Mr. Mott. What we're going to do is go through the galvanic cell uh, micro scale lab and, uh, and kind of what you should do in your lab and some tips and hints for success. Uh, so what I've got is I've got my metals uh, and they're all in one molar solutions of the same metal ion. So that's typically how a galvanic cell is kind of put together. Uh, in the back here in the blue solution I've got um, uh, copper. Uh, this is lead in a lead solution, uh, zinc in a zinc solution, and uh, magnesium in magnesium solution. Again, they're all one molar standard conditions. Uh, and then I have a salt bridge, uh, which is a string soaked in a saturated potassium nitrate solution. Okay, so we're going to hook up our electrodes, and what you want to do is you want to read the highest value that you get. Because after the uh, circuit is complete, uh, what's going to happen is that uh, the voltage will, after it reaches its sort of maximum uh, voltage difference, it's going to start to go down. Okay. The other tip I'll give you is that when you hook these up, if you end up getting a negative value, that means that you've got the anode and the cathode switched. Um, and uh, so you want to make sure that uh, you're not only reporting your voltage, but when you get that positive voltage difference, uh, you are uh, also noting which. Uh, which metal is on which electrode, the black or the uh, red. So let's go ahead and hook this up, collect some data. All right, so there's my copper, and then I'll do my magnesium here. I can get it clipped in there, whoops. Uh, maybe I need two hands on this, here we go. Looks like we're getting around, uh, you should get somewhere between 1.5, 1.6 uh, volts. If you're not getting a reading, then maybe the electrode is on a corrosive part of the, uh, um, not a corrosive part, but a part of the metal that's been corroded. So it's not a bad idea actually before you start to uh, scrape off the, uh, uh, clean the metals with some steel wool. All right. So uh, now we're gonna try, uh, we'll hook up the zinc, collect a reading. Now you notice I'm not getting a reading here because I forgot to do something. I forgot to transfer my salt bridge. So uh, we're not gonna be saving these solutions. So what I'm gonna try to do is uh, just use that same salt bridge over here. Uh, if you wanted to choose a new salt bridge, you certainly could. You notice that when I get the salt bridge in the solution, we are gonna collect a reading, which is good. So again, this is copper uh, at the red and then zinc at the black. Okay, so somewhere about 1.07, somewhere around there should be what you get. Uh, and then we're gonna do the same thing with the zinc. I'm gonna transfer my salt bridge. Get that in there. And then this is gonna be the copper with the lead. The lead is at the black. Okay, and the black, I believe, is the anode. So for this one, you should get somewhere around what we're reading now, about around, somewhere around uh, 0.5 volts uh, as your voltage difference, okay? Um, one of the things that they ask us to do in our lab is that to add some sodium chloride, some salt, uh, into the lead cell. Uh, but before I do that, um, and that's when you have the lead and the copper cell. Uh, before I do that, what I'm gonna do is get some, uh, also get some readings between um, the other metals. We used copper as a reference here, uh, so we could really learn about um, the metal uh, activity or reactivity of copper with regard with in comparison to the other metals. All right, but so what I'm gonna do uh, next is gonna hook up some other uh, combinations. So I will do, let's try the magnesium. We'll do magnesium with the, um, maybe with the zinc. Okay, so switch these out. And again, if I get a negative reading, I'm gonna switch these so I know which electrode was which. And I am getting a negative reading, so let's switch those. Now you could always just kind of record the negative, like negative as a positive, but then switch the electrodes, but just for our video, we'll go ahead and switch it up. So 
So we've got uh, zinc at the red electrode and black electrode is hooked up to the magnesium. So you got magnesium uh, compared to zinc here. Let's do magnesium compared to lead. So we got magnesium, we're gonna compare that to lead now. So right around a volt or so difference there. So we've done magnesium to zinc. Now this is magnesium to lead. Now we can do zinc uh, compared to uh, lead. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, then we gotta go to zinc, transfer my salt bridge. Okay. Uh, let's see if I'm gonna get a positive value this way. Easier said than done to hook these up sometimes. Okay, so I've got my red electrode on or connection to the lead and the black on the zinc. We're getting a potential difference around 0.25, it looks like. Okay. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a little, we're going to go back to the copper lead cell and we're going to add sodium chloride into, um, uh, into that cell, into the uh, lead cell, and then see if we notice anything different. Okay. All right. So I think we had, so let's transfer our salt bridge again. Okay. All right, so we're back to our uh, original cell that we had with uh, copper and lead. And so what we wanna notice is that, are we gonna see a difference when we add some, uh, some sodium chloride, okay, into, into the lead cell, all right? So uh, let me grab a scoop wheel and we'll add that in. So again, all we're looking for is, is there uh, a change? by adding some sodium chloride into the lead cell. Mix that around. So it looks like it is going up, okay, which is what should happen, which is good. Um, if you are in lab and you don't know what's going on, maybe you need to just kind of mix things around a little bit, okay? And when you look at the redox equation between, um, between the copper and the lead cell, and you look at your galvanic cell, um, you can think about maybe what's happening here. Um, let me kind of turn this a little bit. Uh, what you can see here is that my solution now isn't clear and colorless. Um, looks like a white precipitate form. So that's got kind of a clue as to what may be happening and what causing that increase in the potential difference. All right, uh, thanks for watching. All right, the last part of your lab was to make a concentration cell. And uh, so that's what we've done. Uh, so in uh, the well on the right, so these are all pieces of lead and then these are all lead solutions, but this lead solution is 0.001 molar and this is a one molar solution. We've got our salt bridge in there and, um, and so what we're gonna check here is if we have a potential difference, uh, which we really shouldn't see if the solutions were the same concentration. Okay, so we'll hook the black, and then we'll hook up the red. Okay, so we definitely are seeing a potential difference um, in our uh, concentration cell. And uh, in contrast, my, what we should see if we have a uh, concentration cell or not a concentration cell, if we, if we look back and we, and we look at and compare the one molar solutions, we should see a zero value for that. So, um, 
let me switch the salt bridge just to be in this case a little bit more aware of the dilution factor in this case and hook these up and we should be around right around zero with a little bit of experimental error which it looks like we are so it kind of shows the difference in the um, uh, in the how the concentration affects the potential difference.